Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and today I would like to show you Open Sesame, which is a free program for developing psychology and neuroscience experiments. Now this tutorial is going to be pretty basic, but it is not the most basic Open Sesame tutorial. So if you really want to start from the very beginning, I recommend that you take a look at the step-by-step -step or gaze cueing tutorial, which you can also find uh, here on YouTube, right? So this is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit quick, but still uh, pretty easy. Now. We're going to create a complete experiment in this tutorial and the experiment that we're going to create is here on the screen and it is a uh, the cats, dogs and capybara experiment. experiment. Now, so it is very simple, it's a trial based experiment, right? Meaning that we have very short trials and which are repeated over and over again with uh, very slight variations, right? As is commonly done in uh, cognitive psychology experiments. And then we start every trial with a fixation dot, so a little dot in the center of the screen for participants to look at. And then we present a present a, an image, right? And it can be either a picture of a cat, a dog, or a capybara. And the participant has to classify the animal, so has to press the right button if, uh, if they see a cat, the left button if they see a dog, and no button, so withhold a response if they see a capybara. Um, so the capybara is a no-go trial, essentially. Now, at the same time, we present a, a sound, so we play back a sound, and the sound can be either a meow or a bark, but the sound is completely task irrelevant and it's also completely unrelated and unpredictive uh, of, the, of the image, right? So the participant should ignore the sound. Nevertheless, we expect a, a congruency effect such that participants are faster and more accurate if they see a cat and hear a meow or if they see a dog and hear a bark compared to, so those are congruent trials, compared to if they see a cat and hear a bark or see a dog and hear a meow, right? The incongruent trials. And in addition, we, we expect that the participants will regularly make uh, false alarms, so press a button when they see a capybara. And when they do that, we expect them to make uh, false alarms in the direction of the sound, right? So that they press the right button if they hear a meow and the left button if they hear a bark. Now, I've not actually collected any data with this experiment, but from my personal experience, the congruency effect is so strong that I'm pretty sure that this, uh, this will work in, in real life. Right now, Let's move on to, to Open Sesame. So if you start Open Sesame, you see a screen like this. Um, so you get a welcome. Uh, if you start Open Sesame for the first time, you get this welcome tab, which you can just dismiss. Here at the bottom, we have a, a debug window, which is an IPython interpreter, mostly useful if you're going to do some heavy Python coding. We're not going to do that. So I'll just close it. Up, click. And then we have the Get Started tab, which you always see if you start Open Sesame, and it provides you with a list of, uh, of recent experiments and also with a, a list of templates, right? So the default template is what we're going to use because it is a template of a completely empty or an almost completely empty experiment. So I click on it. Okay, now, um, as you can see, uh, the default template has in the experiment sequence. So the experiment sequence is the top level sequence of the experiment, right? So, and the sequence is just a series of items that are uh, executed in, in sequence sequentially. And it has a getting started notepad in it, which is just some documentation. I'll delete it. And it has a welcome sketchpad in it, which provides uh, the, just a little bit of a uh, bit of text, demo text, I'll also delete it. And then the items, when you delete them, go to the unused items bin, which is like a trash can. And just to make the experiment clean, I click on prepare permanently deleted unused items. Yes, up, there we go. So now we have a completely empty experiment. Now let's start with adding a bit of structure to our experiment. I will do it first and then explain what, what, the, what the idea is. So I will pick up a loop item, drag it into the experiment, drop it, pick up a sequence item, drag it onto the loop, say that it has to be inserted into the new loop and up, there we go. Now, what have I done? Well, this new sequence, right? So at the bottom of our hierarchy, that will correspond to our trial sequence. So I will rename it to trial sequence to indicate that, right? It's always good practice to give your items sensible names. So this is right now is empty, but it will contain all the, like all our stimuli and our response collection, etc. So this corresponds to one single trial. To run this one single trial multiple times, we have a loop. So this, this loop corresponds to a block of trials. Now we call it block loop. Okay. Up. Um, now this block loop is where we, for is right now it says repeat each cycle once called trial sequence. 
But if we but if we have multiple cycles, for example, say that we have condition A and B, right? It will say trial sequence will be called twice in random order. And then once it will, trial sequence will be called while condition is A. And once trial sequence will be called while condition is B, right? So it's a very simple logic. We will fill in this, uh, this, 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 this table uh, later. We remove this. Up. Uh, remove one. Right. There we go. Okay. Now, what else do we need to do? Well, our experiment makes heavy use of, uh, of stimuli, right? We have the pictures and the sounds. And stimuli in Open Sesame are generally in the file pool. So you can show the file pool by clicking on this button here. And the file pool right now is empty, meaning that we have no files attached to our experiment, right? You, if we add files to our file pool, they will be, these files are kind of bundled with our experiment. They are saved automatically alongside with our experiment. We can add files by clicking on the plus icon here. We can also add files by going to our, uh, our Windows Explorer or Finder in macOS or Nautilus in, 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 under Linux. And then we just select our stimuli, Up, these ones, drag them in there. Also, up, drag them in there. And now we've copied our, our stimuli to, the, uh, to our file pool, right? So the OGG files are sound files and the PNG files are pictures. Okay. Now, what else are we going to do? Well, just to make it to, to kind of be, uh, be neat, Let's call, uh, let's click on the general properties tab. Right now our experiment is called new experiment. Let's rename it to cats, dogs, and capybaras. And let's also save it, right? So, well, I'll just save it here in the downloads folder. Up, save. Okay, uh, I will also select as a backend, the legacy backend, just because I'm running right now in a virtual machine and the legacy backend runs a little bit better in a virtual machine. Um, so the backend is basically the technical software library that handles display presentation, etc. Okay, now, what are we going to do now? Let's go to the block loop and define our independent variables. So we can type our independent variables here. So we say that we can say, okay, animal, uh, cat, dog, uh, capybara. Then we have sound, we can say, okay, bark, blah, 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 right? But we have quite a lot of levels, and this would take us a lot of time to, to enter everything manually. So what can we do? Well, we have a full factorial design, right? And a full factorial design is an experimental design in which every combination of conditions occurs. And that's what we have in this case. If you have a full factorial design, you can use this full factorial design wizard to easily create a design like that. And it works as follows. So click on it. Then on the first row, I type the names of the, 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 the variables that I have. So that's animal, cat, dog, up, capybara, capybara, and the sound is just a meow and a bark, right? So we have essentially a three by two design, right? Three animals by two sounds. Conceptually, that's what we have. But if you look at uh, our files in the file pool, you see that actually for every sound and every uh, image, every every animal, we have five exemplars, right? We have five individual, five different kinds of capybaras, five different kinds of meow sounds, etc. So technically, we actually have a five has have a three by two by uh, picture number, in the one, two, three, four, five, indicating which picture we want to have. So that's, that's another factor with five levels and sound number also one, two, three, four, five. Oh, the six can go. Uh, right, you see, so we conceptually, we only care about the animal and the sound. So we have conceptually a three by two design, but technically to indicate that we actually have five different exemplars for each picture and for each, uh, for each animal, for each sound, we have a three by two by five by five design. So if we generate this, this design, we should get three times two is six, times five is 30, times five is uh, 150 rows. Oh, okay, and you see that's what happens, right? There we go. And that's why, th now you also see why using the full factorial design wizard is convenient, because if we would have had to type this all in by hand, it would, take, would have taken quite a lot of time. Okay, now, <clears throat> what else do we need to do? Um, well, now let's fill in our trial sequence. So the trial sequence is just the, the series of events that occurs whenever we, uh, whenever we run a single trial. Now we start, every single trial starts with a fixation dot. 
So fixation dot is a visual stimulus. So let's pick up a sketchpad, this icon, which is generally used for visual stimuli, pick it up and drag it into the experiment. Click on it, rename it. I press F2, which or you can right click and say fixation dot. Okay. Now after the fixation dot, two things happen at the same time. We start playing back a sound and we present the, 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 the animal picture, right? The playback, playing back the sound is done with the sampler. The sampler is for playing sound files. I drag it after the fixation dot and I rename it to animal sound. The, the animal picture is done with another sketchpad. I pick it up, drop it after animal sound, rename it to animal sketchpad. After we've done that, we want to collect a response, right? The participant needs to press the right or the left arrow key. To do that, we use the keyboard response item, this one, drag it in, up, drop it behind it and rename it to response. And then at the very end, we need to add a logger item, this blue icon right here. To, and what does the logger item do? Well, it simply uh, tells OpenSesame to write all the variables to file, right? Our output file will be like a CSV file, the spreadsheet. Um, and the logger item writes, writes one row to the spreadsheet with, with the response, the response times, the conditions, etc., etc. So Open Sesame doesn't automatically log the data. You need to explicitly add a logger item at the point where you want the data to be logged. Okay. Now, uh, so far so good. Now let's start giving content to these uh, to these elements, right? So now, right now we have we have uh, we've put them in the trial sequence, but we have not defined what they are yet. So let's click on fixation dot and you see there's an empty sketchpad here, right? I will close the file pool here. Now, what we want to have is simply fixation dot. So I click on the fixation dot element here, the fix dot element up to the center of the screen, click and we have our fixation dot. A sketchpad also has a duration. Right now the duration is key press and that means that the, the, the sketchpad will be shown until um, the participant presses a key. That's not what we want. We want to present the, sketch, the, the fixation dot for say 500 milliseconds. To do that, I type 495. Now, why 495? Well, that is kind of a trick. The display is refreshed only periodically, right? If you know how a display works technically, it is there are refresh cycles. And for most, most uh, monitors, that uh, those are occur 60 times per second. Um, so you cannot present a stimulus for 495 milliseconds on every monitor because Simply, that is not physically possible because of the speed with which the monitor is refreshed. So what happens is you, basically this is rounded up to the next value that is possible given the refresh cycle, which is 500 milliseconds on most monitors. This sounds kind of technical, and if you want to know more about it, there's a quite a long, big page on the Open Sesame documentation under timing, explaining this principle. But as a rule of thumb, just remember that if you want to have a particular duration, say 500 milliseconds, Take that duration and subtract, say, 5 milliseconds. So 495 for 500 milliseconds or 95 for 100 milliseconds, etc. Okay, now our fixation dot is done. Let's move on to the animal sound. So this is a sampler, uh, an item that plays back sound files. And the most important parameter is this one, sound file. So I click on browse. And this allows me to select a sound file, right? From So here I have it opens a file dialog to select things from the file pool. I click on bark one, select up. Now you will notice obviously that this, we don't on every trial want to present bark one, right? What do we want to present? Well, we want to present a sound file that is specified by this sound variable and the sound number variable. So how can we tell Open Sesame to use these variables? Well, what we can simply do is take bark, which right now is the, the literal value bark, right? and I replace it by sound between square brackets. This means that, oh, that the square brackets tell Open Sesame that sound is a variable, right? It's the variable that we've defined in the loop. And this should be replaced by the value of the variable sound. So that can be meow or bark. And the same goes for one, right? We replace it by, by sound number between square brackets, indicating that this should be replaced by the value of sound number. And we leave the OGG because that is static, right? That is a literal all uh, all sound files end with .ogg, so that's fine, right? So now we've basically told Open Sesame to use the variable sound and sound number to specify which sound file is actually played. 
Now, the volume is one, that's fine. Original volume, panning is zero, no panning. Pitch is one, fine. Stop after and fade in are fine. The duration right now is sound. That means that this sampler item will block the experiment until the sound is done playing. That's not what we want. What we actually want is to play the sound and then move on right away, right? To presenting the animal sketch pad so that they are actually the sound and the sketch pad are, sh are played at the same time, are presented at the same time. To do that, I replace the duration sound by a duration of zero. Not meaning that the sound is only played for zero milliseconds, but meaning that once the sound is started with a zero mi millisecond delay, so immediately, the experiment moves on to the next item, which is the animal sketch pad, right? So the, while the sound keeps playing in the background, and that's exactly what we want. So let's click on the animal sketch pad now. The animal sound is done, right? It's fine. Let's click on the animal sketch pad. Um, so here we want to present the picture of the animal. How can we do that? Well, let's start by clicking on this uh, image element uh, thing and then click on the center of the screen. Then just like for the sound, uh, the, this, the, this uh, file pool selection dialog pops up and we select, for example, capybara1.png, select up. Okay, there we are. Now, uh, but the problem is the same as for the sound, right? We don't always want to present uh, capybara1, we want to present Sometimes a capybara, sometimes a dog, sometimes a cat, and also sometimes cat one, sometimes cat two, etc. Now, how can we do that? How can we tell that to Open Sesame? Well, what we can do is edit the script of this item. We can do that by clicking here and say, for example, split view, or a neat trick is also just dragging the script up from here. It's the same thing, right? The script is always like hidden there on the bottom of the screen. Now, and then you see here this line, which indicates, so this script, is what defines the sketchpad right here, right? So this, this is a graphical view of this script, essentially. Now, and here you see file capybara1.png is the literal static value capybara1.png. So what we're going to do is replace the capybara by animal, right? Between square brackets, indicating that this should be replaced by the value of the variable animal, and the one by pick number, indicating that this should be replaced by the variable picture number, right? So just like for the sound, essentially. Uh, then if I up, apply that, you see that the capybara disappears and it becomes a question mark because Open Sesame doesn't know how to, uh, how to show, how to give a preview of a variably defined image, right? But it's not an error. Once we, once we run the experiment, um, th it will be shown. Now, uh, to, to uh, make it a little bit uh, clearer to the participant uh, which, which button to press. What we can do is, for example, uh, on the right side present, or sorry, on the left side present the word dog, and on the right side present the word cat, so that the participant remembers left for dog and right for cat. We can do that, for example, like this. Take a circle, let's make it gray, why not? Up, uh, up, draw it here. One gray circle here, let's make it filled. On the other side of the screen, the same thing. Filled circle. And then we're going to present a bit of text. Here, dog. Right now it's gray on gray, so we don't see it. Let's say white, up. And here on this side, I say cat. Okay, just to give the remind the participant that the left, left button is dog and the right button is cat, right? I don't know if you would really want to do this in an actual experiment, but let's do it for now. Okay, so now, uh, well, we still need to adjust the duration. Right now it's key press. So basically this is shown until the participant presses a key. That may seem like it's correct, but it's actually not. Because what we want is a duration of zero milliseconds, meaning that, not meaning that this is shown only for zero milliseconds, but meaning that once it is shown with a zero, zero millisecond delay, so immediately, Open Sesame moves on to the next item. And that's our response item. And that's the item that we're actually going to use to do the response correction, collection, right? Having a key press duration in a sketchpad is mostly useful if you have a few sketch, sketchpads with instructions, etc., and you're not really interested in in uh, in collecting the actual response times, etc., right? So it's kind of a convenience thing. If you want to really co collect the response times, you should use the response, uh, the keyboard response, for example, or another response item. Okay, now we're done here. So let's click on response. So the keyboard response is pretty simple. Here we have a correct response. If we leave it empty, Open Sesame will automatically check if there is a correct underscore response variable. If so, use it. If not, not have any defined correct response. We will define correct response later on. 
For now, uh, for now we can leave it empty. You can also type the, uh, a, a different variable between square brackets here if you want. But uh, usually most people use correct underscore response. Then allowed response, we're gonna type in left, right. So a semicolon uh, separated list of, of, of keys that should be accepted and all other keys are ignored, right? Except the escape key, which always serves as a pause. And then we have a timeout value. Let's put the timeout to 2000, two seconds. That means that um, if the participant does not respond within two seconds, the response will be set to none to indicate that the timeout occurred. And we really need that because a timeout, so a non-response is actually the correct response for capybaras, right? Because capybaras are no-go trials. Okay, and then the flush pending key presses button indicates, uh, checkbox indicates that if before the onset of this keyboard response item, there were some pending linger lingering uh, responses in the key, key press buffer, they should be ignored, right? So we only accept new responses, which is usually what you want. Okay. Now, and then we have the logger here. The logger just writes everything to file. Right now it says log all variables. That is usually the most safe thing to do. It gives you very big log files with many, many variables, but it's generally the most safe thing to do, right? So I would leave it. Nevertheless, also, even if you have the log variables uh, option checked, always check whether all the necessary info is actually logged, right? Always double check that because you wouldn't be the first person to run to test 60 participants and then find out that due to some kind of bug in the experiment, you, you're missing a particular crucial uh, variable or something. So always check. Okay, now ideally we want to present feedback after uh, the response to indicate whether the response was correct or not. I like to do that. Uh, but to do that, we need to tell OpenSesame what the correct response was, right? And we haven't done that yet. We can do that in a few ways. We can go to the block loop and simply here add a correct underscore response uh, thing and then type here cat, okay, right, dog, left, capybara, non, right? Non with a capital N to indicate the timeout is the correct response for a capybara. You can do that. That's actually not such a bad idea, maybe in this case, but it's a bit redundant, right? And it's a, quite, a, quite a lot of work. So let's remove this, remove one call. Up. And what we're going to do is a some very light inline scripting. So we're going to take this Python inline script and move it to the top of the trial sequence and drop it, insert into trial sequence. And I will call it define correct response. Now then we have two tabs, the prepare tab and the run tab. And the prepare tab is executed, the code that you type here is executed along with the preparation of all these other items. So for example, a sketchpad, the preparation for a sketchpad corresponds to drawing all the, all the, all the sketchpad elements. So creating a canvas essentially offline. And then during the run phase, this canvas is shown, right? So all the time consuming stuff, as far as this is possible is done during the prepare phase. And you can have the same distinction between the prepare phase and the run phase in an inline script. Uh, but then it's up to you to do that correctly, right? Because you are right now you're doing just manual coding. So it's up to you to put sensible stuff in the prepare phase and sensible stuff in the run phase. And in some cases, it's kind of a judgment call. But I would say defining a correct response is definitely preparation stuff, right? Because it's not something that we need to do online during the execution of the trial sequence. It's something that we can do beforehand. So how can we do that? Well, we can simply type if var.animal, right? Is a cat var dot correct response is right. So whereas in, in the Open Sesame user interface, you would indicate the name of a variable by putting square brackets around it, in a Python inline script, you do it by saying var dot animal, right? So var is an, is an object and all the experimental variables or properties of that object, right? And if you try to do this, up. Open set, or the Python will crash because this is not this is not valid Python or actually it is syntactically valid Python coincidentally in this case but it's definitely not what you want right what you want to do is var dot animal is cat in other words what we're saying here if the animal is a cat the correct response is right else if the var dot animal is a dog var dot correct response is left right. And then we could say else var dot correct response is non. In principle, this is correct, but it's a bit unsafe because um, say that we, for example, made a typo somewhere. We, we did, for example, kit here. 
Then what would happen is that all our, all our cats would be lumped together here with the capybaras with the correct response of none. So what we want to do is essentially build in some checks into our script and say, for example, l if var.animal equals capybara, correct response is none, else raise exception invalid animal var.animal. So what we're doing here, essentially this, this part should never happen, right? This will only happen if we make a bug in our experiment because the animals are either cats, dogs, or capybaras, and this should never happen. But we are human beings and we do make mistakes. We do make bugs in our script. So it's good to, to, build, to build these kinds of safeguards into your experiment, right? It's called defensive programming. And that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, now we've defined our correct response. It will be used automatically by the response item because open sesame, this correct underscore response variable has a special meaning for open sesame. Open sesame will recognize and use it automatically. So what we can do now is after the response was collected, has been collected, provide feedback. How are we going to do that? Well, one way I like to provide feedback is simply by uh, presenting a green dot if the response was correct and a red dot if the response was incorrect. And we can do that as follows. Pick up a sketchpad, up, and another one. I will rename the first one to green dot and the second one to red dot. And then um, here in this run if statement, I'm going to indicate, okay, the green dot is only executed if correct is one, and the red dot is only executed if correct is zero. So what is correct? The correct is a variable, again, one of these special variables that Open Sesame creates automatically. And if you have defined the correct response, as we have done, right? Open Sesame will automatically create the correct variable and will have the value one if a response was correct and the value zero if a response was incorrect. And here we tell Open Sesame, run this only if the response was correct and run the red dot only if the response was incorrect, right? Now let's draw an actual green dot here, green up. Let's say that the duration is again 495, right? Not too long. We don't want to have very intrusive feedback here. Just a quick, quick green fixation dot. And the same for the red dot up, make it red, duration 495. Okay. Let's save it. In principle, we've done everything uh, we need to do. In principle, our experiment should be runnable now. Is it actually going to run? Well, we don't know that for sure, uh, because usually if you try to run your experiment for the first time, it will crash. Also for me, that's not a big deal. Then you just find out, find a mistake where, find a mistake and fix it and try to run it again and again, etc. until it works. But let's see, let's see, maybe we're lucky this time. I'm going to run it. Up. <coughs> Okay, ah, yes, cat, oh, make a mistake, cat, see, you see, correct, right button, withhold the response, correct, left button, correct, withhold the response, withhold the response, I don't know if you can hear the sound, I'll turn it up a little bit, <laughs> oh, made, made a mistake, withhold the response, withhold the response, so it's a very difficult experiment, huh? Cat. Okay, capybara. So it works. Um, this is pretty sweet. It, we, we managed to build it in one, one go. I press escape, Q to abort the experiment. Okay, now, so now you've seen in, uh, in less than half an hour how to build a complete experiment from start to finish. Obviously the experiment is not completely polished yet, right? We would want to add a little bit of instructions. We would probably want to provide some breaks between between blocks, right? Not 150 trials after in one go, but say maybe 30 trials, then a break, 30 trials, break, etc. But essentially those are details, right? We've implemented the structure of our experiment, including feedback, including a bit of Python inline scripting, including defining our independent variables, using our variables, etc. in a very, I think, user-friendly and easy way. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.